you so much for staying tuned to Champions TV once again. Uh, today, our topic of discussion that is in Nature Talk is about agroforestry. And our guest in studio is agronomist Joseph Mugo. Uh, so, Joseph, uh, I want you to just link agroforestry and the livelihoods of the present day generations. Yeah, so for the people uh, who practice agroforestry, there are a lot of benefits that come with, the, with those combination of the trees and the animals. And uh, one of them is the income they get from the practices there. For example, of those people who practice agroforestry in the dry land areas, the example of those citrus fruits that do very well in those areas that has a lot of sunlight or a lot of sun. So they're able to reap from selling of the fruits. We also have uh, industrialization, that is uh, growth of agro-based industries, where they benefit, uh, where we, we are able to increase the agro-based industries. Uh, by having those surplus fruits or like the bananas, the oranges being taken to the factory then we get like the banana flour, we get the juices that can stay for a long time and be consumed later. We recently have had the uh, drying of uh, the mangoes and so that, that, those are some of the benefits that the people get from uh, agroforestry. Yeah, so Another good example that is uh, coming up very well is the beekeeping, you know, from the trees that are being planted there. So you can still have beekeeping and honey sells very well. So the people are able to benefit by selling of the honey from the bees. So the, their livelihood of the people is improved. Yeah. Yeah. And they even earn the income. Yeah. And so, uh, agro can agroforestry be uh, used as an adaptation strategy, especially to the issues of climate change? Yeah, sure. You know uh, very well, one of the things that really conserves the environment is the uh, trees. Mm -hmm. And even uh, globally, we have those uh, global bodies uh, always advocating for growing of trees uh, for, for the sake of uh, conservation of the environment and prevention of such things as uh, uh, global warming. So when we do crops uh, together with the trees, so we increase the tree cover and therefore we create even the carbon sinks that will be able to help in uh, ensuring that the air is clean and the, 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 there is consumption of those poisonous gases and therefore we are able to conserve uh, the climate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And. Uh can you talk about the agroforestry in the semi-arid uh, areas in Kenya? Yeah, so I mentioned some of the very well doing uh, uh, areas like uh, Machakos and other Ukaban areas like Kitui, where they have been able to have uh, to, to grow those trees and especially the fruit trees and uh, they are able to practice irrigation. But yet, uh, in my opinion, I would say there is still a lot that can be done. For example, uh, in areas of um, Marsabit and those uh, northern areas of our country, Kenya, there is a lot that has not been done. Yet we can be able to, to do irrigation and also be able to grow trees there and, and maybe grow fruit trees just like we have in Ukabani. Yeah. So agroforestry in semi-arid areas is, is succeeding in Kenya? It is succeeding uh, and uh, the reason, one of the uh, major reasons why I would say that we still have, uh, we still can do something. Uh, we very well know of countries like Israel that uh, the bigger part of the country is uh, dry but yet it's one of the leading when it comes to food production and so they incorporate uh, irrigation in their systems. So we can be able also to uh, have irrigation systems in those dry areas. So yes, we are doing well, but there is still room for improvement. Yeah, so we can, with time we can still... We can uh, continue improving and get, them. and get there. Okay, wow. Uh, so as an agronomist, I understand that you have been going through different policies in Kenya and just criticize some of the policies. Maybe uh, those that are doing well or those that are not doing well? Yeah, so um, 
uh, we have had a lot of policies. Some uh, well reasoned out and uh, really benefited us. And uh, we cannot talk of agroforestry or uh, forestry. And fail to recognize one of, of the wom uh, women or one of the women who really fought for growing of trees and has left one of the body uh, that is Wagari Mathai and has left one of the body that till date make sure that there is growing of trees through the body called the Green Belt Movement. So that is one of the body that to date being uh, gazetted by the government has continued helping in conservation of of the uh, forest and ensuring that people incorporate tree growing wherever they are. But I can also talk about uh, some of the systems uh, or policies that has been set, but really um, they can't benefit us or they cannot benefit uh, in increasing the forest cover. That is like the reason we have had uh, where the government talked about burning of cutting of trees in three months. Surely if we were to check the time that is required for trees to grow to a certain level where they can benefit, benefit the environment and the people, that should take about... Um, more than five years, between five and ten years, but the ban was just for three months. So in 90 days, uh, no tree can uh, grow to benefit the environment, unless we are talking about the Chinese babu, which grows in five days. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what about uh, policies like the Vision 2030 and their plans towards agroforestry and promoting agriculture at large? Yeah, um, uh, th that's one of the well set structure of uh, in our nation that um, will really benefit us. That is, if the people, like I've mentioned earlier, are made aware. I've had a chance to interact with uh, a number of farmers and uh, uh, I don't think they are really aware of the component of the Vision 2030 and what it says about such things as agroforestry. But yet, uh, there are a lot of outlines and clear outlines. Like when you come uh, to areas that mention about forest cover, you know, it, uh, we are required to have uh, at least have had uh, or have 10% of the forest cover by 20, uh, that is year 2030. And uh, I think we are doing well because by the year 2017, we were at 7%. And, uh, we estimate to have by um, 2015, uh, no, sorry, 2025, at least have grown 235 million trees for us. That is an increase of 235 million trees for us to cover. That is 10%. Uh, but I think we are doing well, bearing in mind where we are at the moment. Okay. And uh, actually, as an agronomist, uh, what is your view about... Um impact assessment in agroforestry. I mean, have you ever gone and, from your previous uh, experiences, have you ever gone back and analyzed if it's working or if it's not working? And what is your opinion? Yeah, so, um, like I mentioned about uh, what we have recently um, in Okabane, what they are doing, uh, that is a uh, they are growing the fruit in large amounts. And then because of providing surplus even to the market, they have been able now to, uh, to, to, to have another project that is an in initiative taken up by the people where they can be able to dry the fruits and um, store them, to use them uh, in later days. Mm -hmm. So even they, they can be able to continue uh, even having more trees without uh, worrying where to take their produce from the trees they use in their farms. So it is one of the uh, initiatives. And if that is ensured, even in fruits like bananas, uh, that can very easily be incorporated together with the trees. So we can grow trees together with all those other foods, and then we can uh, have all those uh, methods of uh, storing the, even the surplus foods. Yeah, so that will help in ensuring that we continue growing more trees. Okay. Yeah. And so, personally, you deal with um, uh, agriculture things, and that is agroforestry included. And so, what have you done over the past years to ensure that you, as an, an agronomist, you have promoted uh, agroforestry at large? 
Uh, so uh, I've tried uh, in all areas that, that I've been able to interact with farmers. Uh, one of my experiences, uh, even to talk about uh, where I've grown, is that there has been a lot of cutting of trees as people try to grow foods. Uh, so any time I get a chance to interact with the farmers, I try to, to make sure I educate them on the benefits of having the trees as much as they want to have production of food. Because uh, really, uh, we cannot call it too much of ignorance on their part, is that they have not been educated about why uh, it is very important to have the trees. So on my part, I've uh, interacted with the farmers and tried to help them know why it is very important for them to grow the trees, even as they want to have higher food production mm -hmm. or reap from just the food crops. Mm -hmm. And is it giving positive results? It's giving positive results because uh, from that we ha have had um, some farmers take up a uh, uh, grow of seedlings and um, uh, from the seedling, uh, that's the tree seedlings and uh, providing them cheaply to the farmers. Personally, I also have um, I've started growing of those seedlings from the available uh, seeds from the surrounding. We also have some farmers harvesting the seeds from the trees so that we can grow more trees. Mm -hmm. So I'd say it's yielding. Yeah, but um, there's yet a lot of awareness to be done. Yes, a lot of work is still needed. And uh, perhaps you can talk about the these uh, practices in agroforestry, the practices that, like for example, the issues of water, soil, the farming strategies, the layout of the land. You can just give us a few information about that. Yeah, I think uh, I would uh, really point it towards uh, soil and water conservation mm -hmm. and how uh, the incorporation of trees with crop growing is benefit or is helping in that. Mm -hmm. um, for example, you, know, you have some areas that are very productive, yet the, the, the terrain there or the topography uh, accelerates the rate of soil degradation or um, soil erosion. And um, so agroforestry will really help in conserving the soil and help to provide uh, or prevent soil erosion. So like uh, in a system where the trees are grown along the, the slope, that will help to ensure that uh, the soil are not degraded. And that will even uh, we shall have a sustainable growing of uh, crops because when the soils are degraded, they lose the nutrient. We know the, the top soil uh, has the nutrient that the crops require. So when we conserve the soil, uh, we ensure that even those crops that we, uh, we also require, uh, we, also, uh, they will be we shall have nutrients to have them grow over a period of time. So when we also prevent the soil from uh, going down slope, we prevent the uh, the water bodies from being filled with soil, you know, the siltation. And so we shall have our water bodies still healthy, we shall have our rivers flowing the way they are required, we shall have constant supply of water in all regions to be able to grow the trees and the, also the crops. Okay, uh, so I want you to give a final word to the viewers. Yeah, so, uh, First, I would say thank you for having me, and then uh, I would uh, advise all those that are involved, and that is including the agronomists, including the policy setters, to be able to create more awareness to the people. As much as we need the food, we also need our environment, because it is the environment, uh, when we have a healthy environment, we shall have food being, we shall have sustainable food uh, production, and we shall also have some fresh air which we require every time. So thank you. Okay, so uh, back to our viewer. Uh, thank you so much for being tuned uh, to Champions TV. And I also encourage you to continue uh, staying tuned to Champions TV for this and much more. Uh, from what you have heard from our guest in studio today is that you should take part in promoting agroforestry because all of us are benefit at the end results. Till next time, have a nice time.